everyone, and welcome to this Yosemite Valley Climbing Tour. Um, I've come here today to talk to you about the three main methods of climbing and different formations that you might get to the top of with these styles of climbing. And I'd like to just begin my presentation by talking about the simplest items and forms of climbing that most people know. They've seen 60 Minutes and Alex Honnold and all that. So these are a couple of climbing shoes and this is a chalk bag. This is all some people need to get to the top of everything in Yosemite Valley. You got a pair of shoes right here with some sticky rubber on the bottom. They tight. Tie, they tie tight onto your feet. You can keep them racked up with a couple of carabiners here. And these are helpful for getting to the top of any kind of formation, give you better footing. It's uh, really a very necessary piece of climbing gear. This right here is a chalk bag, holds your chalk, gives you better grip. You can always get more chalk from the store, give you better traction. Same kind of idea as the shoes, just give you better grip. Uh, some people only need this kind of stuff to get to the top, and that's not what we recommend here but it's definitely possible. So just keep that in mind as we go on. These are a necessary piece of gear that you'll keep for every other stage and type of climbing. So I'm gonna take you through a couple of formations today and we're gonna talk about what style of climbing is the most important for getting to the top of that formation or most of the roots on that formation. At least. So we could come over here and I can start to talk to you about the Sentinel, beautiful Sentinel. Uh, the Sentinel is hard to reach through hiking. You have to hike off the top, so it's not necessarily the easiest to get to face or the easiest to climb technically in terms of climbing prowess, like how good I am at climbing with my hands and feet, but the style of climbing is easily the most simple in the valley and it's a good representation of what the simplest routes might look like in the valley. So you would have a large piece of rock like this that, bolt, that is bolted from top to bottom. Has been Rivets have been placed into the rock and then a hanger has been placed onto the rivet that you can attach fixed points of protection to and you never have to choose where those are. Those have been placed for years before you they're safe you know they are they'll hold a lot of weight so all you would need to get to the top of something like the sentinel is the shoes the chalk bag i outlined uh, a rope a couple of harnesses for you and your partner and a belay device and then a set of quick draws so that's a pretty simple set of gear all you need to do is take these and we've got these fixed points with hangers on them and you clip these guys right onto it and then you can clip clip your rope right into here <laughs> So that's a very simple set of gear, very easy style of climbing to do in the valley. The Sentinel's a great representation of that. Uh, it's one full piece of rock that you can climb top to bottom with this easy sport style of climbing as it's called. And um, all you need is a set of carabiners and uh, well, a set of webbing with two carabiners attached, which is the quick drop. So we could move on to another formation which would represent the next style of climbing that I'm trying to talk about, which would be Half Dome beautiful giant half dome, also a long hike to get to it. It's uh, a much more technically challenging mountain in terms of logistics. Uh, you have to, it's a much longer hike to get to the base of it, it's longer to get off. You need to camp at the base probably, um, well in certain places at the base, and you need a set of gear that's very different than the quick draws I showed before. You might need those quick draws also because there could be full pitches of bolts like I was talking about. There could be bolts in the center of pitches, which is a pitch is just a single rope length of climbing so on half dome there might be you know 20 given pitches of climbing mm -hmm. and uh, each of these pitches could be comprised of different things so you might have a full set of bolts for one pitch but that's not top to bottom there's going to be bolts where you only have two or, th or there's going to be pitches where you only have two or three bolts and these pitches are going to require different types of active placed protection for you to get up safely so this is the cam you pull the triggers it's spring loaded it pulls back and then when you let go of the triggers it actively activates I guess it activates in the crack so you can take this and put it into a weakness and then activate it and it'll hold and then this won't pull out until you were to pull the triggers again and pull it out so you could leave this in a crack and set it at like a bolt now because it's safe and you could clip the rope into this and that serves as your point of protection but this is more intellectually challenging than sport climbing in certain respects because you have to pick your own places of protection and you need to pick how safe the protection looks. You need to look at it and know this is a good spot for this, this is the right cam for this spot, and I've placed the cam well, and it will hold my weight if I fall on it. Which is very important if you're climbing very tall stuff because you don't want to take serious injuries when you're up very high, it's hard to get down. So traditional climbing is mostly about using these different types of active protection in crack systems or weaknesses in the rock in order to make progress, much like the sport climbing, except you're placing your protection yourself. So you might ask, <laughs> is there a harder style of climbing even? Is there a formation in the valley that would represent the hardest style of climbing? And I would tell you, yes, there is. We would come over to El Capitan, beautiful El Capitan. It's almost 3,000 feet tall, requires 
much different tactics than even the other two that I discussed. Half Gnome seemed harder than the Sentinel. This is the next big, big step up. It requires multiple days, three to five days for most parties at least, to get anywhere on the face to get to the top. It's huge. You gotta camp on the wall. You're gonna bring food, you're gonna bring water, you're gonna bring extra gear, you're gonna bring clothing, you're gonna bring shelter, <laughs> you know? You're gonna bring everything in a huge bag with you that's heavy. So you're gonna be hauling this huge thing. You're gonna be, there's a lot more logistics to take care of. You need multiple ropes. You're gonna have a ton of those cams I was talking about. You're gonna have a ton of the quick draws I was talking about. You might have a set of climbing shoes and hiking boots keep your feet protected when you're doing different styles of climbing while you're aid climbing, it's completely different. So you're gonna need a lot of different types of active protection, like I was talking about, and you're also gonna need devices to make more forward progress, which I don't have examples of here today, but might include things like hooks to place on small ledges or copperheads where you would take a small malleable metal with a pointed hammer and tap them into the corner to create a point of contact with the rock, and then use that to clip onto, or you might have I don't know, any number of things. There's small low balls, which are like very, very small versions of cams that have just a small malleable copper plate on them that squeeze into a crack and then mold in if you fall on it, which is, they're very small, very lightweight, but they hold a lot. Many, th many different types of aid things. You could slam pitons into cracks with a hammer. But regardless of all that, you're gonna need these guys for sure. And these will help you haul that bag I was talking about earlier, and these will help you ascend the rope after your partner, which are both very important steps of aid climbing. You need to take these guys and you're gonna clip them on to a fixed point rope after your partner is led and you're gonna be able to slowly ascend the rope without having to lead the pitch yourself while you're able to clean the gear out off of the rope, which is the cams you've placed, the quick draws you've placed, maybe those other versions of things that I played, copperheads, pitons, stuff like that. You might need to clean any of that out. So you're gonna be able to ascend the rope on these safely while you're pulling those pieces out and make it up to the next belay. As well, you can use these to gain mechanical advantage with the pulley system to get, pull your very heavy bag up because you're not going to overhand it yourself. You know, act, you know, run a rope from beneath your legs up onto the belay system over a pulley in through this and you're going to be able to pull the bag up very simply. It's much easier than doing it overhand. So that's aid climbing is very difficult and this is a much higher level than even these other two but these are just the basic systems necessary to do these three types of climbing. I'd say aid climbing is probably the least physically taxing of the three, but it's definitely the most intellectually stimulating and difficult in that sense because you're not only picking your own pieces of protection of places, but you're essentially backpacking vertically. You're bringing everything with you. It's a very difficult process to carry everything with you and keep the logistics straight. So it's important to keep in mind when you're picking which style of climbing you want to do. So I would say that climbing in Yosemite is a very important part of what it means to be here. There are many ways to appreciate the park. There are many different styles of appreciating the park. You do mountain biking, and hiking, any number of things you like to do. But I think climbing has a very special place here because of the size and scope of the rock formations around and how important it is to try to get in touch with the most important parts of the valley, in my opinion, which are, I, people wouldn't come here as often if it wasn't for these huge rock faces. So I think it's important to pay homage to them and know about them and learn about them and kind of feel them with your own hands. And I'd say, if you're trying to get out and climb anything at any time, the most important type of gear to have are these couple of guys. You're going to want a belay device like this Grigri to hold the rope, arrest your stops. You got a harness, you and your buddy will need one, and you got a rope, which with these couple of guys, even without any of those other forms of protection I talked about, you'll definitely be able to find somebody to go climbing with you and who has the gear necessary to get up anything you want to get up. And even with that chalk bag and shoes I was talking about at the beginning, you can just go bouldering today around the valley on any of the big boulders around. So keep that in mind as you're here and you enjoy your stay and know that the rocks are here for your enjoyment as part of the valley. Thank you for coming and I hope you have a great day.